Okay, I've finished uh, removing the U-joint cross from the uh, slip yoke on this drive shaft, and uh, there was a unique problem that occasionally uh, happens in removing uh, the cross from uh, the yoke ears. And on this particular cross, these this U-joint is not a Spicer U-joint. This U-joint and the drive shaft that it came out of uh, are made by American Axle uh, Corporation. And American Axle is a company that supplies a, a lot of uh, front and rear axles and uh, drive shafts, drive lines, uh, to several vehicle manufacturers, uh, Chrysler Corporation and General Motors, uh, among others. And the U-joint bearing cap has a steel seal protector on the top of it. Uh, which is a great thing. We're protecting the seal. This is a, a factory sealed U-joint. There's no grease zerk uh, on this at all. But when we press out the bearing cap, the seal protector is still pressed on to the top of the trunnion, or to this bottom area of the trunnion itself. And with that on there, uh, the diameter of this seal protector prevents the U-joint cross from being able to come out of the yoke ears uh, itself. So uh, what I had to do was um, take a hammer and a brass punch and knock these seal protectors off the trunnions before I could physically remove the cross from the, the yoke, the yoke ears. All right. Um, we talked a little bit about inspecting the U-joint itself for uh, wear patterns. And as I said, this, this drive shaft didn't have any, or this vehicle didn't have any um, problems with the drive shaft that, I, that I'm aware of. Um, and so there was nothing wrong with this U-joint, nothing wrong with the trunnion uh, bearing surfaces here. Uh, but of course, uh, I've ruined the uh, universal joint taking it off because the seal protectors um, got damaged in removing it. Plus, I've got a, a brand new um, U-joint I'm going going to put in. Interestingly enough, <laughs> when I order a, a brand new uh, General Motors uh, replacement U-joint, uh, when I open the box of this thing and take the, the U-joint out, It has the, the U-joint, it has a set of copper uh, colored uh, snap rings, and it has a set of, they're still in the box, uh, pink and gray uh, snap rings also. So we have three different thicknesses of snap rings uh, that come with this. Well, this is a Spicer uh, U-joint, and how do I know? Well. <laughs> it has a set of instructions right here, and right on the top of the the instructions, it says Spicer Prelubed Light Medium Duty U Joint Service Kit Installation. And this is it's it's the warning sheet, as we talked about in uh, episode two, uh, that tells us to not mix the bearing caps on the journals. Don't mix these bearing caps up. So if you remove this bearing cap right here don't put it back on in a different location. Keep track of which bearing cap came off of which uh, cross trunnion uh, because they're all, they were all supplied with an equal amount of lubricant and if you take one off and put it in a different location, it'll pull some of the grease out and with the bearing cap and put maybe too much grease in, in another one which could cause uh, grease to come out of the seal on the other side when it shouldn't and cause grease to not or cause there to not be enough grease uh, in another bearing cap. On these factory sealed U-joints, I've taken one here and, and cleaned it out, there's a hole uh, that goes down the trunnion and it's a storage area for uh, grease for the factory sealed joints. So as this U-joint spins in the, in the drive shaft, uh, centrifugal or centripetal force uh, will force that grease out and back around and keep a constant lubrication on the U-joint uh, needle bearings in the bearing cap. 
And as long as that grease does not leak out, and it shouldn't because it's got these great uh, triple lip seal, uh, seals, the U-joint should last a very long time, which of course they do. Uh, uh, the original factory U-joints last a, <laughs> uh, almost the life of the vehicle, depending on how the vehicle is used or abused. Um, so the replacement U-joint for General Motors vehicles with American axle drive shafts and drive lines uh, and U-joints is a Spicer uh, U-joint. So we are going to install this uh, in this drive line here, drive shaft, and uh, get it centered and set the axial, axial play properly using the uh, different thicknesses of snap rings that are available. Um, the Toyota uh, drive shaft that we had over here uh, earlier in this episode also has uh, the, the factory Toyota replacement uh, U-joint kit which I've got one right here. Here's the the Toyota um, replacement U-joint for that Toyota drive shaft. And we open it up and you may notice something that looks very familiar. We've got the same instruction sheet from Spicer and it's a Spicer U-joint uh, also. And it, the Toyota kit comes with two different thicknesses of snap rings, but the Toyota service information gives you part or gives you part numbers. Uh, it gives you, yeah, no, it gives you the thicknesses. Then you have to get the part numbers from parts of um, five other thicknesses of snap rings that you can order, and we'll look at those later. Um, those kits also come with the GM kit and the Toyota kit. Come with this sh uh, sheet of paper here that explains how to set the axial play and center your U-joint with the proper uh, thickness of clips, C-clips, snap rings. Uh, and so we will do that here also. Okay, um, before we put the U-joint in though, I, I wanted to show you the, the yoke, uh, the slip yoke that I uh, removed the U-joint cross from. Um, I told you that these U-joints are, are very picky. They're, they are bearings, and we need to treat them just like, say, we're putting a, a crankshaft or connecting rod bearing in an in a engine block. We need to have these things good and clean. And so I've taking, taken some brake cleaner spray and sprayed out and off uh, all of the, the ears and the grooves uh, for these U-joints and their snap rings. I took a pick, 90-degree pick, and came in and cleaned out everything uh, in those snap ring grooves so that there's nothing that's going to interfere with the snap ring and the different thicknesses of snap rings being able to do their job in centering the U-joint uh, cross in the yoke on both the driveline and the slip yoke here and setting the axial play uh, correctly. Um, I felt around inside. Uh, I had actually in pressing these uh, or trying to get the U-joint cross out with these steel uh, seal protectors, I had gouged a little piece of metal there, so I had to take a small uh, file and come in and just file a little bit of the uh, material away to get rid of the bump that was there. We don't want anything interfering with the U-joint going in freely or uh, interfering with the seal or the seal protector. The seal protector on the uh, Spicer U-joints uh, are plastic, and so when you go to remove those, uh, they won't fight you and they won't damage the yokes, uh, the yoke ears like the steel ones uh, did on this one. All right, so I've got these just super clean, uh, ready to install the other uh, U-joint, but I told you that we need to make sure that we have not bent a... Um, any of these ears. We don't want to bend any of these ears in or out. And I told you that uh, Spicer on their larger uh, yokes uh, has a bar that you put through here because these are line board uh, and you're supposed to put it through and make sure it slides all the way through evenly to make sure that neither ear is bent. Um, well, to, to my knowledge in searching around on Spicer's website, I was unable to find anything like that for the smaller uh, passenger car and light duty truck uh, U-joints. But 
uh, I've come up with an alternate method I wanted to uh, show you to check to see if you have bent one of the yoke ears. So what I have is a set of what are called parallel bars. They're just called parallels. Um, it's from Sterrett, but there you can get them from many different uh, places. I'm just going to take a parallel bar. Uh, this one is machined uh, to a very fine tolerance. It's it's a, it's like a nice straight edge. Uh, this one's number 384 from Sterrett, and it's three eighths of an inch by one half of an inch. And I'm going to take this uh, bar and I'm going to put it in and across the ears of the of the yoke here and I'm just, I'm just going to wiggle it around get it centered down where it should be and I'm going to look to see if there's any uh, gap that thing this flat bar should be laying flat on those yoke ears well if it's if either of these ears ears are bent they're going to be bent on this outside edge here so let me turn this around so I've got it turned upside down I've got this straight flat bar going across on the inside and I'm just looking inside there to make sure that uh, it's nice and flat and I don't see any sign of damage and to prove that there's not any damage and it's not bent I've got a one thousandth of an inch feeler gauge here and I can come in and try to put that underneath this bar here and it won't fit between the bar and the, the machine surface of the U-joint ear. I can't get it to go... Let me get my hands out of your way here so you can see. I cannot get that to go underneath that bar. So that tells me that I have not bent this yoke and that the holes are still uh, straight and that we're good to go to install a new universal joint there. And we will do the same thing on this other uh, yoke here, the aluminum yoke. So I'm just going to come in, put that bar against the The aluminum and look at it I'll look on the inside where it touches look for any taper and if you could run put a thousandth feeler gauge in there to make sure that you haven't bent it it doesn't fit underneath on this side and that is the only way that I've come up with to uh, mimic what the uh, spicer line bore tool does to make sure that your yokes are not bent. Uh, remember that that one yoke I showed you earlier in this episode that was pretty spread. Uh, I put this in there and, and there was an obvious gap. I could see it. Uh, I could I could see it with my eyes. All right, so we are ready now to install a new U joint into this General Motors. Uh, drive shaft. Okay, uh, there's one thing I neglected to mention. When, when we remove a drive shaft from a vehicle, um, and I forgot to do this when I did it, when I pulled the uh, drive shaft out of that uh, vehicle, but it's a good idea to put some tape around the U-joint that has open bearings that could fall off on the ground. Let's say you're not replacing U-joints, you just remove the drive shaft because you're going to do some service on the axle or transmission transfer case, whatever. Put some tape around the the U-joint to keep those bearing caps from falling off. All right, um, just a quick uh, reminder about uh, universal joints uh, and the, the differences between them. Remember, at, at this point, we're ready to install a new universal joint, but I always recommend installing the factory uh, uni universal joints, uh, whatever they may be. And in both of these cases, they're Spicer uh, U-joints. Uh, but if the factory came with another one and that was the replacement, then that's what I would put in uh, also. But um, in the second episode of this series, 
I did a comparison of universal joints. And I want to just look real quickly at that comparison board that I put together uh, just to make sure that you understand the difference between just to make sure you understand the difference between uh, a factory sealed U-joint and uh, an aftermarket uh, greasable U-joint. Um, so right here on the on the left hand side of this board I've got a Spicer original equipment U-joint. Uh, this is the exact size. This is a Spicer 1350 uh, that would fit in the uh, Toyota and, and a lot of General Motors and other products. A uh, factory sealed U-joint. Uh, off to the side here I have um, an aftermarket U-joint uh, that isn't near as good a quality and it has a grease zerk right there. By the way, the grease zerk should always be installed facing the shaft of the uh, drive shaft. If you put it in facing the yoke, you're going to have, have a hard time putting a grease gun on there to uh, grease it. But I just want to look real quickly uh, in closer detail here at the difference and what we are going to be installing on this General Motors uh, drive shaft. So let's look just first, let's just look quickly at the um, aftermarket replacement U-joint. Um, we've got a, the cross with trunnions and bearing caps and seals. Um, the seal that comes with this U-joint is the old floppy rubber seal. Just a floppy rubber seal. It's, it's soft and flexible. Uh, very much like if you saw in my episode 2, that patent from the early 60s or late 50s. I forget what it was, but that's how long that seal design has been around. It's not a very good seal. It, it only has one lip in there. It doesn't hold the grease in very well, and as you drive down the road, it's going to fling slowly fling grease out everywhere, and you must uh, constantly, um, at every time you uh, have your oil changed, uh, have somebody check and, and grease those, which is a hard thing to do if you've, uh, in my experience, if you go to a one of those quick lube places and they change your oil, they, they only look up what the vehicle came with as far as uh, did it have zerks on any of the fittings on the vehicle. And if it didn't, then they don't look to see, well, I shouldn't say they don't, They, I, in my experience, they didn't look to see if any of the U-joints had been replaced and if they had uh, zerks that were, uh, that needed to have grease uh, installed in them. So that's a potential problem with the long-term uh, success of those. Uh, also, it has the same number of needle bearings. It has the same 34 needle bearings as the, the Spicer joint, and then it just has a, a bearing cap. So really, we've just got the, a bearing cap, needle bearings, and a real flexible, uh, flimsy seal. And it comes with one snap ring thickness right there. And the, the snap ring uh, that it came with in this kit was 54 thousandths of an inch. Uh, thick, and if you remember, the two that we took out of this General Motors drive line, uh, two of them were 59, and two of them were 63. Of the 54, <laughs> if we put 54s in, uh, we would really have an excessive amount of axial play, and the the drive shaft would be flopping around, and have that would contribute to the overall runout of the drive shaft itself. All right, now let's look at the uh, Spicer U joint that we are going to install on this vehicle. So we start with a, uh, the cross and the, the, the bearing caps, uh, a, a better, more smooth, shinier surface for the, machi the machine surface of the uh, trunnion. Uh, the, tr the thrust end of it is also shinier and smoother than the thrust end of the other one over here. And then we have coming down in the parts of the, in the, parts of the bearing cap, we have a plastic seal guard or seal protector we have a triple lip seal and i know you can't see uh, down inside of that triple lip seal but it's a very tight pressed in seal that has three lips and it's it's hard to remove even the bearing caps with this on it has so much uh, suction when when it's installed uh, and then we have the same 34 uh, number of needle bearings and then right below that we have a thrust washer. Now I should have put 
<laughs> a piece of paper or something behind this thrust washer because it's black and it's it's hard to see here. But the thrust washer is, is kind of a plastic thrust washer with three evenly spaced grooves that is going to fit in between the bearing cap and the thrust end of the trunnion. So on the aftermarket um, U-joint here, it has a thrust end, but it's going to sit metal to metal, rubbing metal to metal on its bearing cap where the factory original Spicer one has a plastic thrust washer there to prevent metal to metal uh, contact. All right, and then under the or around the thrust washer, there is a needle uh, spacer right here. It's, it's just like a ring. And what that does is it keeps the needle bearings from resting metal to metal in the bottom of the U-joint bearing cup. So this, the combination of the thrust washer and the needle spacer uh, prevent a lot of metal to metal contact, which is going to extend the life of the U-joint uh, and make it more efficient. Uh, it'll, it'll require less energy as long as this U-joint is installed properly to um, to use that U-joint than it will uh, the other one. Okay. So let me get that out of the way. And here is our U-joint we are going to install. I am going to remove uh, two bearing caps and keep track of which one it uh, came off of. Uh, on the, the bearing cross itself, the snap ring bearing cross, uh, there's some letters in there. Uh, SPR209. I think the SPR stands for Spicer. It's just an abbreviation. There you can see it. Anyway, here, the bearing cap on the top uh, with the thrust washer right there. Uh, the thrust washer tends to stick to that thrust end, so let me put it back down in the the bottom of the the bearing cup there. I'll put that one that bearing cap off to the side here and notice there's and notice there's some grease because these are factory sealed. We don't want to wipe that off. We want to leave that there so that we can uh, get it get that bearing cap installed right back on that same trunnion uh, with the same amount of grease that it came with. We are not supposed to add grease to these. They come with the right amount of grease uh, with them. All right, and then let's remove the other bearing cap off the bottom here and its thrust washer. The thrust washer is the same on both sides. It's got the same grooves to allow oil to go out, or not oil, grease, to go out from that reservoir and um, grease the uh, needle bearings over time. Because even the factory sealed U-joints will lose grease if there's an excessive U-joint angle, uh, working angle uh, involved. Somebody's installed a lift kit, um, it will cause this to flex more, it could heat up more, and that could cause uh, grease to eventually uh, work its way out. All right, well, uh, let's go through the procedure uh, to put that, uh, to put this in the, in the yoke. So we took the slip yoke off first. Let's put this back in the slip yoke. Uh, Spicer, in the instructions from Spicer, their service manual for uh, driveline and U-joint repair, they tell us not to put any grease or oil on these uh, bearing caps before we put it back in the, in the yoke. So we're just going to put it in uh, dry like that. And let me get repositioned here. Okay, in the instructions from Spicer, uh, they tell us we need three pieces of equipment to install the bearing caps back into the yoke. Uh, we need some sort of a press, so we, we have our arbor press here, that's what they use also. We're going to need some sort of a uh, socket or pin or spacer or something that we can press against to push the uh, bearing cap uh, recessed into the uh, ear of the uh, yoke and then we need a piece of plate steel at least a quarter inch thick that's wide enough to fit over the entire ear of the slip yoke. 
Now, many of you, like myself, over the years have just used a vise. You go over to a vise, you put the bearing cap in one side, you put the cross in, the bearing cap on another side, and start squeezing it in. Well, um, a vise typically doesn't have jaws that are as wide as the entire U-joint ear. Um, and that's what Spicer wants. They want something that wide. They don't want just a little uh, jaw that's rough. I mean, this plate is nice and smooth. We're not going to put indentations into, into the uh, ear uh, by pushing on it with this plate. If we use just a regular vise, uh, it, its jaws may be so small and so rough that we could damage the ears of the yoke or even the uh, bearing cap. As an example of what I'm talking about, let me just show you a, a, a vise that we have right here on our bench that I used to use uh, for U-joints, but I, I won't now. So here's the Wilton vise that I normally use. This is a five and a half inch wide jaw Wilton vise. And if we zoom in on the jaw, you can see that the steel blocks there in the, in the jaw, they're just maybe a half inch, three quarter inch uh, tall. 13, 17, 18 millimeters. Uh, that's, that's not the width of a U-joint ear. or a, That's not the width of a yoke ear. Um, I've installed brass, I've installed copper jaws on these vices uh, for manual and automatic drivetrain work because the, the regular jaws are so rough that you don't want to clamp anything in there that's uh, got a machine surface on it. And yet we're using that to compress U-joint uh, bearing caps and down to their uh, yoke ears. So that's, if I mean, obviously, if you don't have anything else, that's that's going to work. Maybe you could put a, uh, some pieces of wood in there as you uh, squish it down to where you're not going to damage anything. But having that steel plate that I showed you and a press of some sort will be a much better way to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our U-joint cross. I'm going to take those uh, letters that we're pointing uh, up and point them up as I install them. Install it in the yoke itself. So we put one trunnion in, then the other, and we'll let it hang down underneath here. We will take the lower bearing cap that came with this U-joint and we'll put it in and push it part way up into the U-joint, uh, push it part way up into the yoke ear and we want everything, we want the U-joint cross at a, at a right angle there. Uh, we are not going to just simply come down with the arbor press and press on the ear. Um, we have to put this plate in here to distribute the force as we push down. Okay, so I've got the, the lower bearing cap, the U-joint cross aligned. We've got the plate. Everything's nice and clean. It should just push down straight and even. Didn't take much force at all. I'm all the way bottomed right there, and we're done. I didn't put enough force on there to bend anything, and I surely didn't damage uh, an ear by doing that. All right, with everything nice and clean, there's no dirt or garbage that's going to fall down into the uh, other bearing cross. Uh, with nice clean hands and a clean workbench and everything, we'll grab the next bearing. We always install the bearings with them bearing cups with a facing down so that there's no chance that our needle bearings inside are going to fall out and, and, and tip. So now I'm going to hold the U-joint from falling down. I'm going to take the other bearing cross or U-joint bearing, put it in the yoke ear, and then at this point you need to be very careful and let the U-joint cross come down and align itself with those other needle bearings. So we'll put this plate back on, we'll come back over here, 
We've got nice flat surface at the bottom of the arbor press, a nice flat surface here. We're going to push down a little bit and just go a little bit, um, keeping, making sure that we've got some movement, up and down movement, in that bearing or in the U-joint cross as we're pushing down. If it starts to bind up at all, you better stop because the needle bearing must have come out. So I've bottomed out at the bottom here. I have absolute free movement of the joints. No needle bearings fell out. I'm not squishing anything in a vise. There's no dirt or, or neural indentations being put in anything. And now we have the U-joint bearing cups installed flush. They're installed flush with the ears of the yoke. Now, at this point, uh, we have a whole bunch of axial play. See that up and down movement there? That's called axial play. We want to limit that axial play. We want that axial play right here to be no more than two thousandths of an inch on this particular U-joint um, and on this, this driveline for this manufacturer. Uh, we still have to install the snap rings. And so to install the snap rings, uh, what Spicer recommends uh, to press these bearing caps uh, in even uh, farther is to take some sort of a pin or in this case I've got a, a snap-on 13 16 um, impact socket that's a smaller diameter than the bearing cup. I'm going to sit that there. I'm going to put the bearing cup right on top of that. I'm going to take our steel plate, put back over here, and I'm going to come back down. I'm going to center everything with that arbor shaft. And then I'm going to push down, not real hard, I'm just going to push enough. And then check it. to see if there's enough room to install a snap ring in there. Uh, there's not quite enough room yet. I need to go just a tiny bit more. So I'll put that back in there. We will push down again, just a little bit. Right there. And now it's the, the top of the bearing cap is lined up almost exactly with the uh, snap ring, the bottom of the snap ring groove right there. So I don't need to go in any farther because it won't do any good. Uh, I can install a snap ring at this point. Uh, the snap rings that uh, came with the kit, if you recall, are three different thicknesses. The thinnest snap ring of the bunch is the 59 thousandths, the copper snap ring that um, comes in the Spicer kit. So I will get out two of those. We always have to install snap rings on or in pairs. So get those out. Uh, let me get the old snap rings just to show you the difference between a one that's been sprung and a brand new one. Okay, if you look at these snap rings here, this upper one is sprung, the lower one is not sprung, and the difference is right here. Notice that it's, it's nice and lined up, where right here you've got that notch. That upper snap ring is, is no good. So we've got a notch right here, we don't have a notch right here. This snap ring is bad and not reusable, this one is the brand new one. Okay, so we're ready to put a snap ring in this side. So I've got the snap ring. I'm going to sit that in there like that so you can see it. Normally I would have this vertical 
and then I'm going to squeeze in, but I'm only going to squeeze in just enough to get it down in the groove. There we go. Do you hear that snap? That snap was the snap ring snapping out into the groove of the yoke ear itself. So I've got the snap ring installed. It's all the way in the groove. When it is installed all the way in the groove, notice there's a little bit of a lip or a ridge there on the snap ring, just like the sprung uh, snap ring had. You've got just that tiny bit of, of a lip there. All right, so that snap ring's in, but that does not mean that there's no space between the snap ring and the uh, bearing cap. There, there, there could be some gap there, uh, and that's fine. We're going to take up that gap here in a minute, but let's push in now on the other bearing cap and get it to where we can put the snap ring in it. So I'll use our socket as a spacer. Arbor press, nice flat parallel surfaces will come down, make sure everything's aligned, and get the camera angle right here. And we'll push it, push the lower one up. There we go. I didn't push it up as far as I could, I just pushed it up. And I'll just take, I'll be patient. I'm going to take a look to see if there's enough room in that snap ring groove to install a snap ring. Uh, there, it's close. Um, not quite, I think. Let me check the snap ring, see if it'll fit in there. No. Okay, so I'm going to push just a little bit more at this point. There we go. I felt an obvious amount of resistance when pushing down with the arbor press. It was going down and then all of a sudden it just stopped right there. And I know that I've hit the thrust washers at that point. And if I put any more force on it, I'm going to damage it. So now I can install the other uh, snap ring. And I'll put that over here vertical. Once again, I'm just going to squeeze just enough to drop it down in. I do not want to over squeeze this. Okay, here's a typical uh, situation that you might run into. I see it all the time. I try to put this snap ring in and notice that it's not fitting down in the groove. Look at the gap here on the inside of that snap ring that's not in the groove versus the gap that is in the groove. Notice the groove is, or the snap ring is partially uh, concealed here uh, by the, uh, the yoke groove on this side, but not on the other. And that means the whole U-joint cross here That means the whole U-joint cross needs to move that way. So, um, So there's a couple of ways we can move the cross down. Uh, some surface information tell, tells you to take a, a brass drift and a hammer and to hit the U-joint cross and knock it down. Um, that is a possibility, but I would try to not hit the universal joint or the bearings. The, the problem with hitting the joint itself is that you're also kind of hitting it sideways into the bearings at the same time. That can cause some of the brindling, the, the hard pressing, the little grooves, and uh, uh, premature bearing damage at the, at the same time. Um, we have the tool from General Motors for uh, U-joint removal, but if you look at where it rides, that would push right on the seal protectors and damage them. So I don't want to use that tool. Um, I've got the Ford tool here. Oh, by the way, some of you may say, well, why don't you just 
hit or push or hit more on the top of the the upper bearing cap. Well, remember you've got those thrust washers in there, and it's a thrust surface. Even if they, even if you use the cheap aftermarket uh, U joint, you're still pounding uh, on a bearing surface. Uh, when was the last time you thought it was okay to pound on a bearing surface? Yet uh, we seem to want to do that on uh, U joints all the time without thinking about it. So I have the Ford U joint tool here, the one that was like thirty-five dollars on uh, eBay, the OTC tool. And so I will line that up because it will hit the bearing crosses or the, the cross or the bearings on the cross. And let me just push down a little bit, see what movement we get. Just a tiny bit, if anything, but that's that's all we need. So that'll push that down. Now we need to push that bearing cap. Uh, up some more and I'm just going to leave the snap ring right there and come in and push just a tiny bit so if you've lost track what we've done is we've pushed the the bearing or I'm sorry we've pushed the u-joint cross and the other u-joint bearing cap up for farther but that didn't push on the lower bearing cap that the way we have it oriented. So now I'm going to push on it just a little bit right there. And the snap ring does not want to go into the groove. So up to this point in your in your career, what have you done with with U-joint um, snap rings that wouldn't fit. Well, the temptation is to grab a hammer and a and a uh, punch or a chisel and try to drive it in there. Well, if you do that, we are already so tight that I can barely move the bearing cross. Um, so, wouldn't it be nice if we could just put in some thinner uh, snap rings? Well. Um, there are thinner snap rings uh, available. And so, uh, as we saw in the second episode, uh, we have snap rings that are thinner than 59, although in the kit that came from um, Spicer for this particular drive shaft, it only 59 was the thinnest shim. Uh, we have a 61 and a 63. So, our you have two choices at this point. Pound it in and, and live with a, a stiff U-joint that's going to fail prematurely, or let me grab the spec sheet. There's a 58 and a 57 thousandths uh, snap ring available uh, through Spicer for this U-joint uh, bearing diameter. So the 57 is purple in color, and the 58 is none. It has no color at all. It's black. So, at this point, we've got to install a thinner set of snap rings on this yoke to continue. So, we have to have, we must have axial play. At this point, we, can't even, we cannot even get the snap ring to go into its groove properly. Uh, we're pushing so hard on the... the other side that it's bowing the snap ring out that's a sign that <laughs> that there's too much force uh, pushing on the other side so we have no choice but to go with thinner snap rings okay well I have thinner snap rings I've or ordered those uh, since Toyota uh, also uses Spicer uh, snap rings uh, I just ordered a bunch through a local dealer uh, but then I found out that I could just order them on uh, Amazon or eBay directly from Spicer so all of these have uh, Toyota uh, part numbers on them, but they are Spicer uh, snap rings. And so I've, I bought all the different thicknesses for steel yokes, different thicknesses for aluminum yokes, and different thicknesses for the grease Zerk style um, universal joints, and with a grease Zerk on the U joint bearing cap itself. So if you are going to do U-joint repair work or U-joint replacement work at your shop, you really need to have a, a selection of snap rings to do this correctly. 
So let me grab some 58 and we'll try that. And if that doesn't work, we'll grab the 57s. All right, I've got a set of uh, 57 uh, thousand snap rings here. So let's put, let's see what happens when we put those in. Both snap rings are installed, the, the 57s. I've got movement, but I suspect because of the bowing out of the snap ring that we will have zero axial play. So at this point, there's why would this be the case? Either something is not aligned right and I've installed something, a, a needle bearing fell down, a, a thrust washer is out of place and it's getting squished or something like that. Either way, I've got to take it apart and see uh, what's going on. Um, or the other thing that could be going on is the cross width variation of the U-joint. Let me just make sure we're down all the way we are. Let me grab a dial indicator here, or not dial indicator, digital caliper here. The other thing that can happen is, if I turn on my caliper here, this width right here may not be exactly the same as the width of the other cross, set of crosses. So when I remove this U-joint uh, for inspection, and I'll do that off camera, uh, so I don't have to bore you with the details, but I will measure the cross width variation. If there's a difference, which a lot of times there is, a couple thousandths of an inch, uh, this cheap aftermarket replacement one had seven thousandths of an inch uh, cross variation uh, width with its bearing caps installed. Uh, the original Spicer one had one thousandth of an inch. Each one could be different. And so making the assumption that they're exactly the same dimension uh, is wrong. I've, I've never seen one uh, that uh, is the same. So we may have to end up taking this U-joint out and rotating it 90 degrees and putting it back in um, as long as I haven't installed something incorrectly. Uh, there's a sign that just a little bit of uh, shiny metal surface sticking up on the trunnion on the bottom versus uh, none on the other side, which makes me think that there's something out of place. Maybe when I push that uh, thrust washer down in with my finger, I didn't get it uh, in all the way. So I'm going to take that out and we will see. All right, I've removed the U-joint that I just installed. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with the thrust washer in the one in that went in the top or the thrust washer uh, for the bottom. So let me get those lined up. There's the bottom right there. Here's the top. So what I'm going to do is a, uh, a reading of cross width variation. Uh, right now, these are the two bearing caps with the SPR facing up that I had installed in those uh, yokes. So let me grab my digital caliper here. Uh, to do this, we will use a vise. All right, I am going to just partially, right there, best I can, squish that U-joint uh, in the vise. All right, then I'm going to take my digital caliper, make sure it's good and zeroed, and I'm going to come in and measure, try to find the absolute smallest number across. All right, I've got a 4.189 inches. 4.189. Uh, for you metric guys, uh, the reason I prefer inches is a thousandth of an inch is a finer increment increment than a hundredth of a millimeter. All right, so that was the width of the U-joint cross with the bearing caps installed the way we had it uh, in the yoke. And then I'll come back over here. We'll put the other side in. We'll give it the same squeeze. 
Come and take a measurement here. I'm getting exactly the same thing, 4.189. <laughs> so it's a, it's a perfect U joint. All right, so there's no cross variation in the joint. I can't blame the U joint. Um, the only thing I have left to blame is uh, myself, I guess. Uh, let's go back and look at the yoke. Maybe there's something in the yoke in the snappering grooves uh, that I've missed that is interfering with the ability of the snappering to seat properly. Let me just double check the the yoke itself. Uh, I cleaned these before, but I'll, I'll do it again. Uh, I'll run a uh, brass brush through the groove. I'll get a pick. Just make sure I haven't missed anything on either side. Maybe there was just a tiny bit of something there on that one groove. Maybe a little bit of rust that I didn't quite get out. All the way. And that may have blocked the snap ring from seating properly all the way up against the edge of the groove. Well, let's try it again. Uh, somehow I've got a little bit of grease in the yoke holes here, so I'm going to wipe that out so that we don't promote rotation of the bearing cap. And let's, let's try this again. Oh, that's a lot better. Um, it is certainly freed up more than it was. It's not flopping around, but with the triple lip seals, we've got six seals that um, are fighting us in rotating this um, U-joint cross. So, and we have the thinnest snap rings that you can get uh, in there. So the true test now, um, since we have equal snap rings, what we've done is centered it, but what we, what we need to do is make sure that we have some axial play at the same time. It doesn't do any good to center it with equal snap rings if there's no play. We do not want it preloaded. Um, we have to have, we don't want zero, and it's okay to have almost nothing, like a half thousandth or one or up, up to almost two, but um, this one is a little bit of a, a little bit of a fighter. <laughs> All right, now uh, we need to put put the snap or put the U joint in the aluminum uh, drive shaft now. But oh, I forgot to point out to you, all four of these bearing cups from the previous U joint are uncoated, meaning that. American Axle, when they put this axle, this uh, drive shaft together, didn't use coated uh, bearing caps, and I have no idea why. Um, maybe they have some other technology, I, I just don't know. Um, I don't see anything uh, different, but I could be wrong. Um, the replacement U joint does not have coated bearing caps, and it did not come with the coated snap rings that it's supposed to have for aluminum uh, drive shafts. So, that is, uh, that leaves us with, us with no choice but to use the snap rings that come with the kit. All right, well, let's put this other one, let's put this other U joint in. All right, uh, to the left of Spicer, got this bearing cap here, and of course it's thrust washer stuck to the thrust side. So I will very carefully stick that back down in. Same location. We'll put it on the left here. We'll take the one that goes on the right and its thrust washer. We'll put it to the right here. 
And let me get my all my stuff out of the way now because we got to bring the the drive shaft in. Okay, we'll bring in our drive shaft. I've got my table here to try to get things aligned just right. That single two before looks like it does a great job. Take the U joint cross to the left will be the one that is going to go in. We'll put it going down. So we'll put, oh no, we have to line up our marks. Where's our marks? Aha. So we've got, we've got a yellow paint mark right here. We have a yellow paint mark right here. So to the left of the spicer, uh, abbreviation will be the yellow mark. So once again, keeping everything good and clean, we'll bring that in. We'll get our bearing cup for the left, point it straight up, get our bearing cross, drop down in just like that. We'll put our metal plate on the top here. We'll get our piece of wood lined up over here. Make sure it looks good and parallel. And then we'll come down. We've got to center everything a little better. And push. Bring that down all the way flush. Right there. No excessive force. Okay, we'll get our other bearing cap. Put it facing up, turn everything over, line up the cross. Get our steel plate in here. Come back. Okay, I'll bring it down. Down flush, there we go. All right, we have axial play, up and down play. Um, our other side's not frozen solid, that's a good a good sign. <laughs> and then um, let's get our socket and our plate. Back over here, center it. Push it up in a little bit. Check it, see if the snap ring will fit. Looks like it will. So let me grab a 59, we'll try those, since that's the default one, as I've explained. Get that installed, just like that. Turn it over, get our socket again. tell from the angle of the socket underneath that we're not quite um, lined up parallel. So I'll use a something, a spacer or something over here, my notebook, try to line that up a little better. Got another steel plate here. That looks better. Okay, I'll bring that down. Bring it down to where we have some good resistance. And let's check to see what our snap ring situation looks like. It's hard to tell. Let's see if that'll fit. Got the 59 here. Oh yeah, it fits. Okay, so the 59s work in the aluminum side, but we've got them pushed in too far. Now we have to um, 
push them, separate them back out to where we have some axial play. So I will use the Ford adapter here. Just push down a little bit to make sure we're snug against the snap ring. Feels like we are on that side. We'll turn it over. Do the same thing on this side. Feels good and snug. Okay, now the question is, is 59 too thin? As you can see, we have some really free movement in the U-joint cross with the aluminum ears, but on the steel ears, it's not C solid, but it it's certainly tighter. And I can tell you right now that the axial play on those steel ears is going to be less than the aluminum ears. So let's go measure that. And then we'll decide, do we need to change the snap ring thickness of these copper ones? We know we can't change the, the uh, snap rings on the steel ears because they're the thinnest ones you can get. Um, but let's see if we're in spec or out of spec for axial play on both of these sets of snap rings.